Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. I've got a special guest at the range here with me today. This is Othias Howdy. from C and Arsenal. And he brought a Lewis gun out uh, for us to play with. He's gonna tell you guys briefly about it and I'm gonna elaborate a little bit, but apparently this is like the biggest golf ball launcher or a well, tennis ball launcher ever made. They use these back during World War you I to are, launch tennis balls. You are laughing, but our comment section is full of, why is that barrel so big? <laughs> well, it looks like you got some 303 in this pan here. Yep. So it's a 303 machine gun, I'm yes. assuming. So this was an American design uh, that then Britain latched onto before we did. Uh, actually, we have a whole episode on this if you check out our channel because there's a lot of history behind why the US did not adopt this right away and some confusion and engineering problems. Hmm. But uh, for the British, it ran fine. Um, it just didn't care for 30 6 very much. Uh, that got fixed much later on. But uh, they loved it, the Belgians loved it. Uh, it saw a lot of service in World War I and a lot of different cartridges. And the whole thing's set up to be an early light machine gun, air-cooled. Um, it basically uses like air induction off of an aluminum fin in here and this whole yeah, shroud. Yeah, I noticed that. That's kind of cool. Yep, so it's got a big aluminum fin. At the time, this is pretty hard to produce. And then we've got this big shroud to cover that. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna, it's gonna pull air through. It's gonna cool down that barrel. I mean, there's a limit. You can't, there's no meltdown video for this one, unfortunately. Oh, but, come on. <laughs> um, you could get it eventually. Um, yeah, yeah. Pan fired mag, um, pretty controlled feed, and it's been a beautiful uh, firearm for the period. I think in the long term, it has a few weaknesses in terms of the inability to clear jams and stuff like that. Sure. Um, but overall, just an open bolt, fully automatic piece of World War One history. The mag here that we're gonna abuse a little bit is actually a, a later edition, so this isn't quite the World War One mag, mm -hmm. um, but they're only a little bit different, so. I think we were talking about earlier, you said that the, the mag pans are a bit fragile, they were prone to bending a little bit. Well, when they're loaded, the cartridge tends to hold them where they wanna be but the minute they're unloaded you kind of got to take care because they're going to flex real easy if they take any weight and sure. so then you have to bend them back out as you load them so they tend to self-correct as they're loaded but they can pinch they can bind so so you think the like not only the rate of fire but you said the way that the air induction system with the with the aluminum fins acting as like just a really good heat sink and also allowing the air to flow through right the, do the, you feel that the capacity of the mags hmm. was sort of purposely set that way so a gunner couldn't get them too hot instead right. of running belt fed where you could in theory have some continuous belt of ammo or something right so we this have, would keep the the rate of fire under control a little bit in theory the time it takes to change off would help but i'm going to tell you if you got a good team because it's a it's a two-man team at a minimum uh you got a loader and a gunner yeah um you could probably outrun the ability of the gun to cool itself off if you mm. try but the good news is these they were, were conscious of that I'm they're sure. not supposed to be for sustained fire these are these are actually for shoot and move light machine guns, which by the way is a very new concept in World War One. Like this sure. is not, you, most uh, com, most countries went to World War One thinking machine guns as light artillery. Not so something as like portable. this would have really gave way to the bar, more or less. Yeah, and actually- the bar was meant to be portable, but yet a lot of firepower. Yeah, a lot of the history of this gun, this is a ground, this is like an infantry version, but a lot of the history of this gun is in aircraft. This was one of the first aerial machine guns. It was the first aerial machine gun the US tested essentially by sending it up in like an early push motor plane and just strapping it with a leather strap and shooting into a tarp. <laughs> so, um, this this really got applied to aircraft because then you can ditch all of this you can put a double stack pan on it and just let it roll and yep. so really popular for aircraft um that's mostly where the u.s used them but on ground you're going to see really effective they would use these to seek out in place german machine guns um so that way you could sort of suppress and then get grenaders to throw in and clear that area um but beautiful weapon and then even like the canadians they came up with a leather sling so they could hip fire the thing so yeah. We'll get to play with it a little bit, I think. Absolutely. Well, uh, so this thing is functional. We're going to shoot it a little bit? Yep. Well, let's, uh, let's throw some rounds down range with this. Now, she's an old girl. We're going to treat her with respect. Uh, but let's have a little bit of fun and see if we can throw some 303 down range. Uh, I'm kind of wondering myself how that uh, little bitty bullet is going to stabilize through this big hole in the... I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know there's a barrel in there. There's a barrel in there. I'm kidding. It doesn't launch tennis balls, guys. It launches 303. Let's, uh, let's take a few shots and we'll show a little bit of the operation, get some shots of it and uh, have a little fun. Want right. to? Yeah. Let's do it. All right, we're gonna shoot this Lewis for you guys today here. It's a 47 round uh, pan magazine and you see it is exposed on the bottom. Uh, I was actually thinking, oddly enough, that there would be some sort of a cover, but there isn't. It's just an open uh, space here on the bottom and basically it just indexes on the top. There's a little notch, we'll index it. And we're gonna kind of wiggle it around and I think we're pretty much good to go. Uh, this machine gun does fire from a open bolt. So I'm gonna get behind the gun. The charging handle does not reciprocate, right? So once it's back, it, it, or it does reciprocate. I'm thinking like a 240 Bravo where you charge it and then push the, for, uh, the charging handle forward. It doesn't do that. So it rides back and forth. All right, we're gonna take a few shots with the Lewis here. 
All right, so there's some ratcheting teeth here that uh, index the magazine. Hopefully we'll be able to see that a bit. We're gonna take a few shots. You're right below that left plate. You're hitting just below that left plate. Just below it, and then it walks up and it walks to the right. So if you gotcha. want your first shot hit, you can come up a little bit, or you can bear a little bit left, and the burst will get them. Let's uh, let's go out the three. There you go. You're right on it. He's still out. Well, we had a separation <laughs> out of battery. <laughs> That's definitely what that was. I guarantee you what happened there. Because you had a live there. round in the chamber and it must have... Uh, yep. Here, give it a yank. There we go. Yeah, so probably a double feed. Yep, yep. look at that. The round set off the, the primer. Yep. Wow. These uh, old guns, guys, they're, they're kind of finicky. All right, Othias. I mean, this is one cool piece of history. Right. I mean, it's, it's still neat to get behind it and see it working and everything. Well, at least trying to work for us. Yep. Uh, you know, to be fair, guys, uh, these guns are getting old. And it's just an awesome opportunity to get out here and at least see what they're all about. And I'll tell you what, not bad in the accuracy department. No, and you get a taste. I mean, we've got our own program and we use clean. So we'll set everything up. We'll get it running right because we want to show what it was like in World War One. Sure. But now you're getting a taste of like what we have to go through over and over and over again as we get through each of our episodes because we got to make sure everything runs right, at least for that one take. Yeah. And we don't really have, we don't get to play diagnosis on air, but it's fun to do something like this because you guys can see. This stuff doesn't always run perfect 100 years later. No. <laughs> uh, tolerances are walked out. We've got a uh, case failure here. Yep. Um, chances are we've probably got a little bit of headspace that's walked out in that barrel at this point, and we need yeah. to go back in and turn it back one, set it back in. And, you know, we've got Mark on Anvil. You guys know him. Um, it'll all get taken care of, but we're five hours from home, so this is what you go with, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and the thing is, it's very similar for us. I mean, you, there's always going to be little gremlins that expose their little heads and just things you have to deal with. And sometimes it just happens. But you know what? It's not going to stop me from having a good time. I enjoyed myself. I learned something about the Lewis that I didn't know. Uh, I've never really been exposed to this machine gun, so it was an awesome opportunity for me to learn a little bit of something and have some fun with it. So uh, I feel like I'm a little more familiar with it now, which is cool. Um, guys, thanks for watching today's video. We hope you enjoyed yourselves. This was a blast. Uh, I love the fact that I get to do this, and thank you guys for coming out. And uh, make sure you check out his channel. When, where can they find you if they yeah, want to go subscribe? Uh, we're on YouTube at CN Arsenal. Uh, if we ever get booted off of there, you can find our own website. <laughs> but um, no, if you can't find it, it's probably printed on the screen somewhere down in the description by the time you're watching this. If you can't spell it, that's all right. Primer and just pick your favorite World War I gun. We probably got it covered by now. Yep, that's right. Guys, thanks for watching today. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.